guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm gonna to show you how I created my pop floral design. I originally created this design as part of my audition, if you will, <laughs> to be one of Auntie Tay's influencers two years ago. And I was so proud of this design and I've had such a wonderful relationship with Auntie Tay ever since and we are so thankful for her. So I'm excited to teach you guys how I created this design. You're gonna see all the products that you see in this video listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so as usual, I'm starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup and I'm going to try and mark the true center of my cup down the sides. I'm gonna be using a square combo ruler to help me get a straight line from top to bottom. And I'm not really gonna mark the whole line really. I'm just gonna mark the top and the bottom of my cup with a silver Sharpie. So I just have a roundabout kind of idea of what that center line is. We're creating a split cup design. So this is just how I like to mark off my split. It's not always perfect, okay? Sometimes it's a little bit crooked. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think it's easier just to eyeball it, but whatever is easier for you, all right? And then once I got that true center mark uh, on my cup with my silver Sharpie, I'm going to use some blue painter's tape to tape off the sides there. One of my oldest tutorials, the uh, marble split cup tutorial, which I'll link down below in the description box, really goes into detail on how you can really get a true center line uh, down your cup. Once I have both sides taped off, I like to use a sewing ruler to kind of measure and make sure both sides are equal on the top and the bottom. And that helps to let me know if I truly got a split down the center. Sometimes I need to adjust my tape and sometimes I nail it on the first try. Now I'm ready to apply my patterned adhesive vinyl. This is vinyl that's already been printed. I bought it like this, okay? And they come in these 12 by 12 sheets. And I'm just gonna kind of position the vinyl around the cup so I can get an estimate of how much I can trim off. I just sort of fold it to mark like where the vinyl will start and stop. Um, and then I will fold it along that line and then cut off the excess. I wanna have about an inch of excess on all sides, top, bottom, side to side, uh, just so I can give myself a little bit of wiggle room. Once I've got all the excess trimmed off, I'm gonna peel back about an inch of that backing paper from my vinyl. I'm gonna line that up about halfway down through the center of my painter's tape. I do wanna have a little overlap over that tape, okay? And then I'm gonna use my vinyl scraper to help me apply the vinyl to the cup. You guys see me do a million vinyl wraps on the channel before, same routine as usual. We're using that vinyl scraper, scraper to really push back the paper backing from our vinyl as we're pressing the vinyl against our cup. Lifting up if we need to, if we get too many wrinkles or something, and then pressing back down. All right, and then once I've got my vinyl applied, I'm just going to press my vinyl into the seam of the tape that's below so I can see where I need to trim. And then I'm gonna use a sharp craft knife to trim along that tape seam to remove the excess. Once I've removed the excess on either side, I will kind of cut off the bottom excess with my scissors and then hold my blade against my cutting mat here and roll my cup against the blade to cut the bottom excess. And then of course, we'll run the knife along the top rim to remove the top excess as well. Again, you guys, I've gone over in great detail how to do vinyl wraps on the channel many times. I will link some of those vinyl wrap videos that go a little more into detail down in the script in the description box if you want to check those out too. All right, and then once we've got all that vinyl applied and trimmed up nicely, I'm going to remove our painter's tape from the sides 
and reapply them along the sides of our vinyl. We're going to be masking off this whole printed vinyl section um, to protect it while we paint and glitter the other side. I know some of you may be thinking, why don't you just paint glitter and epoxy and then apply the vinyl? Uh, but as I've stated in a few videos before, I would always prefer to try it and apply vinyl to a straight, not epoxied surface because it's just easier to apply. That's my own personal preference. If you wanted to glitter and epoxy this whole tumbler and then apply your vinyl over it, you can do that. I just feel like you get a much cleaner finish around your top and bottom rims and with your application as a whole if you do this in the beginning. All right, so once I've got my pattern vinyl uh, all masked off, I'm gonna start by uh, base painting this other side just plain white with a matte white spray paint, and I did two light and consistent coats. I would rather do two light coats than one heavy one where I'm gonna be getting dripping and things like that. All right, and then once my spray paint's dry, I'm going to divide and mask off what will be the pink section. So I'm gonna use like thinner painter's tape for this and I'm going to angle the painter's tape to create what will be the top half of our three-way split design. So the way I did this on a 30 ounce skinny straight is I started um, one end of the diagonal about four and a half inches up from the bottom of the cup and then the bottom Part of the diagonal was about two inches from the bottom of the cup but you can position yours at whatever angle you want this is just what works for me okay and then once i have my tape positioned i'm going to mask off the remainder of my cup with some saran wrap and then we're going to spray paint that top section pink with Design Masters pink glow spray paint you can find this spray paint at i think michael's in the spray paint section. This particular spray paint requires lots and lots of shaking uh, and you want to do very light coats with this. It has really good coverage so one good coat is usually enough for me. Once this dried I mixed up some epoxy and I'm using Alumalite's amazing quick coat epoxy. This is a fast setting epoxy so I love to use it for applying glitter because it dries really quickly. So I mixed um, 2.5 milliliters of each part and we're just going to apply it really lightly and evenly to this pink section. You're only going to need to dip your finger into the epoxy like one time and that should cover that whole section. All right, and then we're just going to let it rip with Wednesdays from PT Olive Glitters. This is hands down like my favorite hot pink glitter. And we want to get really good coverage uh, through this whole section here. So just like I said, let it rip. Make sure you've got everything covered and then I'm going to aggressively tap off the excess and let this dry for about an hour and a half before I move on to the next section. Once my glitter was totally dry, I sealed it with some Quick Coat from Counterculture. Quick Coat is a water-based urethane sealer that's going to really lock down this glitter. It is not going to move once I seal it in place with this stuff. I only use this stuff to seal glitter when I'm doing sections like this where it's imperative that those glitter color sections are completely isolated and sealed. All right, so I'm just applying this on my turner with a silicone brush. You'll notice that all my other sections are still taped off. I haven't removed any of the masking um, that had been there originally when we first started on this pink section. This sealer is gonna take about 30 to 45 minutes or so to fully dry, depending on the temperature of your environment. Now that that's all dry and locked into place, I'm ready to start on my white glittered section. The reason I wanted to start on the darker colored section first is it's gonna be a lot easier for me to keep the white glitter out of the pink glitter section because it'll be less noticeable if some of it happens to migrate into that other color section than it would be if the pink were to get into the white before it had been sealed. All right, 
So that's just the way I like to do it. You might like to do it the other way around, but whatever. Um, I'm just going around with some extra masking tape here and removing any kind of excess glitter that might be hanging around the side or that didn't get fully sealed in with that quick coat. All right, and so now we're ready to mask off that pink section and epoxy and glitter the white section. So again, I'm going to mix five milliliters of Illumilite's amazing quick coat, that fast setting epoxy. We're going to apply a nice even layer, very light hand on this. We want just barely enough to cover. Okay, make sure you don't miss any spots. All right, and then once we've got that all nice and smooth, we'll apply our white glitter, which today we're using Nookie from PT Olive Glitters. It's one of my favorite white glitters. I used to love Bliss. That was like my hands down favorite white glitter. Um, but that color has been discontinued. And a lot of you have asked me what a good substitute to Bliss would be. And I definitely think Nookie is a great substitute. It has beautiful sparkle, beautiful white color, but also all those beautiful iridescent pieces in there as well without too much pink and green. As soon as I got done glittering the white sections, I removed any of that excess masking tape. I did not remove the masking tape yet though from the pattern vinyl side. We'll do that in a little bit. All right, and so after that white glitter dried, which took about mm, an hour and a half, because again, we used a fast setting epoxy, I did spray seal it with some Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss spray paint while that printed vinyl was still masked off. Okay, I forgot to film that part, um, but that clear coat took about 20 minutes to dry and now here we are applying our first coat of epoxy. I'm gonna start by coating my vinyl side first so I can reduce the risk of some of that glitter migrating into the vinyl section. I did still get some rogue pieces of glitter onto my vinyl because I didn't do a really good job spray sealing that white glitter, unfortunately. So I did have some that kind of moved around. Um, you can avoid that by doing a really nice coat of clear spray sealer on that white glitter before moving on to this step. I just kind of sprayed it on there, rushed the job, and I paid the price. But whatever, it still looks good. <laughs> All right, so this first coat of epoxy, it's going to dry for about four to six hours. And then I'm going to come right back and go over this a second time with a second coat. Now, my first coat of epoxy was 30 milliliters. Then my second coat of epoxy was also 30 milliliters. And then I came right in after that second coat was dry and went in for a third coat. I normally would not do three coats back to back on a cup like this. However, I did notice after the second coat, I definitely needed to do some sanding and I didn't feel like sanding. So I just went in for a third coat anyway. Not a big deal. And realistically, I mean, you guys could do that all the time if you wanted to, to avoid any kind of extra sanding. All right, so after I got three coats on here, my cup was nice and smooth and definitely ready for some decals. I did do some sanding at the rim like I always do and I had a couple of pokey bits here and there that I sanded down first. Uh, and then I washed my cup with some dish soap and water, dried it off with some paper towels, and now I'm ready to apply my vinyl. Before we apply our vinyl, I do want to address this bottom. So you'll notice I only glittered half of the bottom and I left the other half stainless um, with just epoxy over it. So I'm going to mask off the stainless steel part with my masking tape and we're going to just paint that black with some flat black spray paint so that it'll kind of mesh better into the edge of that vinyl, if you will. Um, before I used to wrap the vinyl all the way around that corner and do everything I could make it look like seamless down around the bottom. I don't have time for that. So <laughs> I'm just masking it off and painting it black. It's going to look great in the end. Okay. So I'm just running my tape line right along the vinyl line 
And then I'll mask off the remainder of my cup with just some saran wrap and then a quick little bit of black spray paint and we're good to go. All right, and so now we're ready to add our vinyl details. I've already cut my vinyl. I'm gonna be using this polka dot pattern that I created myself in Cricut Design Space. I released a bonus video yesterday on the channel that shows you how to create your own patterns in Cricut Design Space. And I made these polka dots pretty much exactly the same way as I made the hearts in that tutorial. The polka dots are half inch circles that I spaced and aligned using the technique that I taught in yesterday's video. The vinyl lines are squares from Cricut Design Space's shapes feature that I've resized to 11.5 inches wide by 0.15 inches tall. And the Empowered Women decal is a uh, free file that you can find in the file section of the Flynn Sisters community group on Facebook. I'll put a link down below where you can find that group. So I'm gonna start by placing my vinyl lines and I'm just gonna place these along the natural lines of our design here. I'm gonna trim the excess off with my craft knife and the seam where they meet in the bottom here will overlap just a little bit. You just wanna trim that up, make sure they're nice and clean. All right, and then once I have the vinyl lines placed, I'm going to apply my polka dot pattern. Now you'll notice that the polka dot pattern is a little bit bigger than the section itself. I just did that because it would be a whole lot more tedious for me to try and size and create this pattern for this exact section. It was much easier to just create it for, you know, a larger rectangle section. <laughs> I guess you'd say. So I just placed it over that white section and trimmed off any of the excess with my craft knife. You'll notice how some of the polka dots overlap that vinyl line on the diagonal little detail there. And you'll just press the black polka dots into that vinyl line and use that as a guide to trim off the excess polka dot, okay? Uh, if you watch closely enough on the video, you'll see what I mean, all right? And so it it's, looks kind of complicated, but it's a lot easier, I guess, than, you know, placing a bunch of individual dots. Also, make sure, you know, so that your polka dots are straight, that you're lining them up along, you know, the sideline before you get started there. All right, next I moved on to my main decal. When I had originally created this tumbler, I used one of the files from Auntie Tay's members only file directory. She has tons of SVGs and product templates and graphics for her members. I will link a link down in the description box where you can sign up for that if you want access to those same files as well. This one is just one that I created for the Flynn Sisters community and it is free in the file section of my group. So I'm gonna measure my decal so I only have to cut once and I'm going to apply my decal with the hinge method like I normally do. All right, and then once I got that done, I also added a cute little heart decal to the bottom of my tumbler that I cut with the same holographic vinyl that I used for our vinyl lines. And this heart is just the generic heart shape from Cricut Design Space and I cut it at about 1.2 inches for the size. All right, and then once I was done with all that vinyl work, I wanted to lock it all into place with Counterculture DIYs quick coat. We used that earlier to seal our glitter. Well, we're also going to use it to seal our vinyl. I'm applying it using a silicone brush while my cup is on the turner. This is again a water-based urethane sealer and you can find it at countercultureDIY.com. I'm going to coat the whole cup, not just my vinyl, because 
This stuff also helps to lock in any kind of contaminants and things that will stop us from getting a really smooth final coat. It'll really help save you on some time, all right? So I am gonna coat the whole cup, and this is gonna take about 30 to 45 minutes to dry. That dry time may vary based on the temperature in your workspace, but you do wanna ensure that it is fully dry before you put on your final coat, because if it's not, it could look cloudy under your epoxy. All right, so now we're moving into our final coat of epoxy. This final coat was 30 milliliters, and I'm using Alumalite's Amazing Clearcast Plus. This plus formula has enhanced UV protection in it, so it's going to keep that white section bright white for a long time, and those colors are gonna stay nice and vibrant because again, it has that enhanced UV protection. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This design is such a classic for me. I absolutely love it. You know, I can never resist like a black and white polka dot stripe and floral combination. It just, it sends me every time. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And if you liked my video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.